Okay, this section is on polar coordinates, and polar coordinates come in the form r, as in your radius, comma, theta. So a point, for example, uh, 2, comma, pi over 2 means to go out a radius of 2 from the origin, from the point 0, 0, and then rotate that pi over 2 or 90 degrees, and that would give you a point on the graph. Um, that's the way you graph these. Let's go ahead and graph the polar equation. The graph r equals 2 means graph the equation that has a radius of 2. Well, something that always has a radius of a constant is going to be a circle. So the graph of r equals 3 is a circle, graph of r equals 2 is a circle, and so on. r equals 2 is just going to be a circle uh, centered at the origin with a radius of 2. Now, uh, to graph these, you can go to the Excel sheet and go to the sheet called Any Graph. Right here in cell CC10, uh, if we were going to graph r equals 2, you would just type in equals 2, hit Enter, and then now click the Get the Graph button right up here. And when you click that, you'll get a graph that looks like this. And that doesn't look like a circle, but it is a circle. It goes out to 2 on uh, all sides right here. So that's the graph of r equals 2. Um, let's go ahead and go to the next one. And the next one says to graph the equation r equals theta. Now, you could graph this by hand. And for example, as your theta, your degrees increase, then your uh, that's the same thing as these, this many radians, like for example 45 degrees, the same as pi over 4. Pi over 4 is about 0 0.6785, 0 0.785, so the radius would be 0 0.785. So as your degrees increase, your radians increase, so therefore since r, your radius is equal to your, your uh, angle, your radius would increase too. So as you go, uh, as you rotate, you'll be going out farther because the more you rotate, theta tells you your amount of rotation r is equal to your amount of rotation. What does that graph look like? Well, let's go ahead and do that. Right here in uh, cell CC10, I'll type equals, and you can either type x or you can click on the cell. It's easier really to type on, uh, click on cell CV10, and the directions are right up here too. They can tell you how to do that. Just hit enter, and then what you'll have to do is click the uh, get graph button, and you get a graph that looks like this. Now, if you still don't know what this graph looks like, we can go out farther. Let's go out to, um, uh, right now I'm out to uh, 2 pi. I just typed in equals 2 pi in there, 0 to 2 pi. But if you're not sure what this looks like yet, let's go out to 20 or so, 0 to 20. And you can see that this thing is just a spiral because as your angle increases, so does your radius. When your radius, when your angle is uh, just uh, pi over 2, then your radius is pi over 2, and as that increases, as your uh, angle increases by going around, uh, so does your radius increase, because on this equation, r equals theta. Now, if you go negative on this, too, if you go negative 20 to 20, then you get a spiral in and a spiral out, and you get something like that, and that's all this graph is going to do. Uh, let's go ahead and go on to the next uh, graph, and the next graph is this one, um, well, this explains how you can convert from uh, uh, polar coordinates to rectangular coordinates, and that's done for you automatically on the Excel sheet. And we'll get down here to where we'll actually graph some uh, different ones. This one's actually called, the one we just did is called the Archimedean Spiral. And there it is farther out. Now, if we graph something like r equals cosine of theta, let's just go ahead and go through this. Again, the way you would type that in on the uh, Excel sheet is in this area, you would just type equals cosine parentheses, that means of, and you could either type x or click on this cell right here. I prefer just to click on that cell. Close parentheses, hit enter, and then what you have to do is click the, uh, the uh, get uh, graph button. And you'll get a graph that looks like this. What is this? Well, this is actually a circle of uh, radius 1 that is centered right here at uh, 0.5 on the x-axis. So hopefully you know how to use this section. And uh, if you go through the uh, textbook, we'll just go through the textbook now to get the idea. If you wanted to graph r equals cosine 2 theta, then uh, it actually turns out to have four of these things that are called petals, four petals if it's r equals cosine 2 theta. You could think of r equals cosine theta right here as having one petal, but that petal is actually a circle right there. Let's see what happens if you graph 
uh, r equals cosine 3 theta, well, you don't get 6 petals, you get 3. How about if you graph r equals uh, 4 theta? Now, if these don't finish, then you can always extend your uh, start and end so that you can see the entire graph on these. So you could have to change your start and end. You know, negative 20 to 20 is a good, good ways out there that you can probably see everything. But uh, let's go ahead and, and uh, see what this like. R equals cosine 4 theta. Well, that actually has 8 petals. Now, how do you know how many petals something has? Well, it turns out if there's an even uh, number before the theta, then the petals are doubled. And if there's an odd number of uh, 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 before the theta, it's equal to that number. For example, cosine of 20 theta would have 40 petals. Cosine of 21 theta would just have 21 petals. Okay, again, 20 because it's even would have 40 petals, and 21 because it's odd would have 21 petals. Sine of theta is just going to be the same type of thing except it's a circle on the y-axis. See, cosine theta was a circle on the x-axis, positive x-axis. And uh, same thing happens with uh, sine of uh, theta. Sine of 2 theta, the number of petals are doubled. You can see that they're uh, not across the axes like they were back on the sine of, uh, cosine of 2 theta. But you still, the pattern holds with, uh, if it's even, they're doubled. And if it's odd, like sine of 3 theta, it's equal to the number of petals. Sine of 4 theta then would have 8 petals. You can see here's large ones, 20 theta with your 40 petals, and 21 theta with your 21 petals. So you could be asked on a uh, problem, the uh, equation r equals sine of 200 theta has how many petals? Well, it would have 400 petals because it's an even number. r equals cosine of 105 theta has how many petals? Well, it would be 105. Let's go ahead and graph, if you would graph this on the Excel sheet, you would just type in equals 1 minus sine, open parentheses, then click on that cell, I think it's CB10, and then close parentheses, hit enter, and then click the graph button, and you'll get a graph like this. This is called a cardioid because it looks like a heart. It's pointing down to the uh, bottom. Why? Because this is minus sine theta. When you think of sine, think of y. Minus means pointing down to the bottom. Uh, 1 plus cosine theta is going to be a cardioid that points to the right because it's positive uh, plus cosine theta. It's like the positive x part. Now, when you start putting things in here like 1 plus 2 cosine of theta, you may end up with two loops. It's like a cardioid that came in and formed a second loop. And the uh, question sometimes is how far to the right or left does the inner loop or outer loop go? And on this one, you can see that the outer loop goes to 3, and the inner loop goes to uh, 1 on that. And there's actually a pattern that you can use up here to determine how far out the inner loop and outer loop goes. Let's go a little bit more and see if you can figure out what that pattern is. This one, r equals 1 plus 3 cosine of theta. Notice that the outer loop went to 4, and the inner loop went to 2. Okay. How about this one? r equals 1 plus 11 cosine of theta. Again, this could have been sine theta. It just would have been pointing up instead of to the right. But this one, the outer loop goes to 12, and the inner loop goes to 10. Well, how can you determine how far out the inner loop and outer loop go? Well, add these two numbers together, and you get how far out it goes. And subtract, take 10 minus 1, and you, sorry, take 11 minus 1, you get 10, and that's how far out the inner loop goes. Here's your 4. You see here's 15, it goes out to 15, and 11 minus 4 is 7. So that kind of fits with what we're saying there. You see this one. Now here, uh, yeah, it did go out to 5 because 3 plus 2 is 5. But what's 2 minus 3? Okay, 2 minus 3 is negative 1. That's why a loop didn't form. It came in and went out to negative 1. So it could, you know, that's how far the inner loop went. It actually didn't form, but you know how far to the left it went right there. And this explains the pattern right here that you have. And we'll pick it up with uh, more graphs uh, on the next video. So we'll take a look at these starting with the next video.